Hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm with the Suwannee River Regional Library System. Today, we're going to be reading an excerpt from Catherine Mansfield's The Garden Party. Very early morning, the sun was not yet risen, and the whole of Crescent Bay was hidden under a white sea mist. The big bush-covered hills at the back were smothered. You could not see where they ended and the paddocks and bungalows began. The sandy road was gone and the paddocks and bungalows the other side of it. There were no white dunes covered with reddish grass beyond them. There was nothing to mark which was beach and where was the sea. A heavy dew had fallen. The grass was blue. Big drops hung on the bushes and just did not fall. The silvery, fluffy toy toy was limp on its long stalks and all the marigolds and the pinks in the bungalow gardens were bowed to the earth with wetness. Drenched were the gold fuchsias. Round pearls of dew lay on the flat nasturtium leaves. It looked as though the sea had beaten up softly in the darkness, as though one immense wave had come rippling, rippling. How far? Perhaps if you had waked up in the middle of the night, you might have seen a big fish flicking in the window and gone again. Aha! sounded the sleepy sea. And from the bush there came the sound of little streams flowing, quickly, lightly, slipping between the smooth stones, gushing into ferny basins and out again. And there was the splashing of big drops on large leaves, and something else. What was it? A faint stirring and shaking, the snapping of a twig, and then such silence that it seemed someone was listening. Round the corner of Crescent Bay, between the piled up masses of broken rock, a flock of sheep came pattering. They were huddled together, a small, tossing, woolly mass, and their thin, stick-like legs trotted along quickly as if the cold and the quiet had frightened them. Behind them, an old sheepdog, his soaking paws covered with sand, ran along with his nose to the ground, but carelessly as if thinking of something else. And then in the rocky gateway, the shepherd himself appeared. He was a lean, upright old man in a frieze coat that was covered with a web of tiny drops, velvet trousers tied under the knee, and a wide awake with a folded blue handkerchief round the brim. One hand was crammed into his belt, the other grasped a beautifully smooth yellow stick, and as he walked, taking his time, he kept up a very soft, light whistling, an airy, far away fluting that sounded mournful and tender. The old dog cut an ancient caper or two, and then drew up a sharp, ashamed of his levity, and walked a few dignified paces by his master's side. The sheep ran forward in little pattering rushes. They began to bleat, and ghostly flocks and herds answered them from under the sea. Bah! Bah! For a time, they seemed to be always on the same piece of ground. There ahead was stretched the sandy road with shallow puddles. The same soaking bushes showed on either side, and the same shadowy palings. Then something immense came into view, an enormous shock-haired giant with his arms stretched out. It was the big gum tree outside Mrs. Stubbs' shop, and as they passed by, there was a strong whiff of eucalyptus. And now big spots of light gleamed in the mist. The shepherd stopped whistling. He rubbed his red nose and wet beard on his wet sleeve and, screwing up his eyes, glanced in the direction of the sea. The sun was rising. It was marvelous how quickly the mist thinned, sped away, dissolved from the shallow plain, rolled up from the bush and was gone as if in a hurry to escape. Big twists and curls jostled and shouldered each other as the silvery beams broadened. The faraway sky, a bright, pure blue, was reflected in the puddles and the drops swimming along the telegraph poles flashed into points of light. Now the leaping, glittering sea was so bright it made one's eyes ache to look at it. The shepherd drew a pipe, the bowl as small as an acorn, out of his breast pocket, fumbled for a chunk of speckled tobacco, pared off a few shavings, and stuffed the bowl. He was a grave, fine-looking old man. As he lit up and the blue smoke wreathed his head, the dog, watching, looked proud of him. Bah! Bah! The sheep spread out into the fan. They were just clear of the summer colony before the first sleeper turned over and lifted a drowsy head. Their cry sounded in the dreams of little children who lifted their arms to drag down, to cuddle the darling little woolly lambs of sleep. Then the first inhabitant appeared. It was the Bernal's cat, Flory, 
sitting on the gatepost far too early as usual, looking for their milk girl. When she saw the old sheepdog, she sprang up quickly, arched her back, drew in her tabby head, and seemed to give a little fastidious shiver. Ugh, what a coarse, revolting creature, said Flory. But the old sheepdog, not looking up, waggled past, flinging out his legs from side to side. Only one of his ears twitched to prove that he saw and thought her a silly young female. The breeze of morning lifted in the bush and the smell of leaves and wet black earth mingled with the sharp smell of the sea. Myriads of birds were singing. A gold flinch flew over the shepherd's head and perching on the tip top of a spray, it turned to the sun, ruffling its small breast feathers. And now they passed the fisherman's hut, past the charred looking little where, where Lily and Milk Girl lived with her old gran. The sheep strayed over a yellow swamp and wagged. The sheepdog padded after, rounded them up and headed them for the steeper, narrower rocky pass that led out of Crescent Bay and towards Daylight Cove. Baa, baa, faint the cry came as they rocked along the fast drying road. The shepherd put away his pipe, dropping it into his breast pocket so that the little bowl hung over. And straightway the soft, airy whistling began again. Wag ran out along a ledge of rock after something that smelled and ran back again disgusted. Then pushing, nudging, hurrying, the sheep rounded the bend and the shepherd followed after out of sight. That is all I'll be reading today from the excerpt of um, Catherine Mansfield's The Garden Party. Thank you for joining us for Short Stories with Sarah and we hope to see you next time. In the meantime, stay safe and don't forget to wash your hands.